Income tax 2022-2023 items that are not income. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Most of this information comes from the Tax Guide for Small Business for Individuals Who Use Schedule C, Publication 334, Tax Year 2022. You can find it on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. We're focused on line one, income. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is, in essence, an income statement. However, just an outline, a scaffolding, other forms and schedules rolling in, flowing into these line items. That being, or one being, the Schedule C, business income, having in essence an income statement in and of itself, business income minus business expenses, the net then rolling in from Schedule C to line one income of our income tax formula. This is the form 1040. We're focused down here on line eight. The Schedule C would flow into the Schedule one, which would flow into line eight of the form 1040. This is a Schedule C, profit or loss from business, where we can see the income statement formats of income minus the expenses. Okay, we're focused on the income side of things for the Schedule C business income. We talked about the things that are included in income because, and noting that from the IRS perspective, they think of everything as in essence income, unless there's an exem exemption from it having to be included in income. So when we think about income, oftentimes the questions are, is this something that is income? Is it exempt from income? If it is income, is it gonna be business income, something that's gonna be on the Schedule C or possibly income that needs to be reported in some other location? Now we wanna think about those items that are not income, the exceptions uh, to the rules, the ones that the IRS are gonna say there's some kind of exemption to. So items that are not income. In some cases, the property or money you receive is not income. So we have appreciation. Increases in value of your property are not income until you realize the increases through a sale or other taxable disposition. So when property value, for example, real estate is a common uh, property value situation where over time it's not going to go down in value, but hopefully go up in value, which is different from most other business property that you will have because most of the other business property is likely equipment. Equipment will generally go down in value. It will depreciate in value as there's wear and tear on the equipment. Buildings and uh, real estate then could go up in value. The building still has wear and tear, of course, but just the value of the property could go up. And then the question is, well, if something goes up in value, do I have to record that as income? And the general rule is not until you realize the increase in the value, meaning you actually sell it. And at that point in time, you've realized you've gotten the actual money or equivalent something other than money in payment for it. And part of the rationale for, for that kind of accounting method would be that uh, if say a building goes up in value, for example, if, if you don't realize it by selling it, then you haven't really you haven't really actualized. We don't really know exactly how much the building went up in value for, and it could go back down with market swings as market swings basically go up and down. If they charged you the uh, income when the building or, or asset went up in value, then they would be charging you income when you didn't actually get any money for it. And that could result in situations you can imagine where someone has a tax bill that they can't pay because they charged them taxes on income that went up that, that they didn't actually realize. So they don't have the actual money because they didn't sell the asset in order to pay the taxes. And that's not the situation that we want to, uh, to see. Also, of course, the increases and decreases and the value of property are just estimates. If we see something like a building, it's unique in nature. There's no other building that's exactly the same. We could try to estimate what the value of the building is, but until you actually sell it, we don't really know what the, what the value is. All right, you've got consignments. Consignments are merchandise to others to sell for you on are not sales. So the title of merchandise remains with you, the consignor, even if their consignee possesses the merchandise. So this is a situation where you have inventory 
but you're going to give your inventory basically to someone else not for them to own and then resell as their inventory but in essence you still own it as the inventory so like artwork for example if you were to give that to a museum or give it to even like a restaurant or something for them to display and but it's still your you still own it because you're basically using that facility that area to demonstrate it for sales so they're going to try to facilitate a sale in that way then that's the situation so therefore if the ship goods on consignment you have no profit or loss until the consignee sells the merchandise because they're selling it in essence on your behalf merchandise you have shipped out on consignment is included in your inventory until it is sold so even though it's not in your warehouse it's in another restaurant or a museum it's still in essence your inventory because they're acting as kind of like your their your store for you to sell the merchandise on your behalf in essence taking a fee of course for that do not include merchandise you receive on consignment in your inventory uh, include your profit or commission on merchandise consigned to you in your income when you sell the merchandise or you receive your profit or commission depending upon the method of accounting you use in other words if you're the one that's receiving someone else's inventory and you're the one that's going to be selling it on consignment then again it's not your inventory in that case if i have a restaurant and i'm going to display paintings in the restaurant that someone else owns then i don't really own the paintings in that case i'm trying to sell them by displaying them possibly in a museum or, or whatever something like that Okay, so construction allowance. If you enter into a lease after August 5th, 1997, you can exclude from income the construction allowance you receive in cash or as rent reduction from your landlord if you receive it under both the following conditions. So under a short-term lease of retail, of retail space uh, for the purpose of constructing or improving qualified long-term real property, for use in your business at that retail space. So that's a pretty special kind of situation for a special industry. 